Well, greetings, Mr. Kolo's Arts Class. What we're going to look at now is putting section 10.2 and 10.3 together. So now we're going to start converting moles, mass, and number of particles together. So it's going to be a two-step part to go from one to the next and then one to the next, whichever way we want to end up going. So we're going to convert between moles and number of particles. Now we're going to be able to convert molar mass of compounds from last section. And now we're going to go to moles to mass. And then we're actually going to also put in those number of particles too. So to begin with, putting this all together, I would like you to move back to number 21 in your notes from section 10-2. This is the one we skipped from before. And right up above that one, we're going to start out one mole of x, whatever element we're dealing with, is x, equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles of it. Or one mole of x equals that number of grams of x from the periodic table. So what we're going to look at is, in that box you have, above number 21 in your notes you're going to put in here 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles whatever they might be of x equals one mole equals a number of grams of x so now we're going to be able to convert between one to the other to the other uh, remember we'll always need to stop at the moles as we're going so now that we've done that we're going to work through number 21 in our notes. So we've got that little information at the top to help us out. How many atoms of gold are in an alloy bullion, or the alloy bullion with a mass of 31.1 grams? An alloy bullion is just a gold brick. So we know right away that we have 31.1 grams of gold. And we're trying to find how many atoms. Now we can't go directly from atoms to gold. We need to have a stopping point along the way. So we know right now that we do have 31.1 grams of gold. Now from there, our first conversion factor is we can't go, so we can go from grams to moles. To go from grams to moles, we know by using your periodic table that we can go right from grams to moles, that one mole of gold is going to equal 196.97 grams of gold. And that remembers from our PT. So now we're in moles of gold. Now we can go from moles to atoms. So we can go right from moles to atoms. To do that, if you have one mole of gold, we should be able to find out how many atoms we have. And in our case, remember, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. In our case, since we're in gold, we're in atoms because our gold is an element, so 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of gold. So now we went from grams to moles, moles to atoms. So grams of gold cancel grams of gold, moles of gold will cancel moles of gold, and in the end, thinking about this as kind of like one large fraction, numbers on top, 30.1, times 1 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd divided by 196.7 so to do that we could actually put all of this together thirty one point one times 6.02 exponent 23 
Now at this point, we can just go divided by, just all doing this just in one shot, 196.97. And when we hit enter, we get 1.5, or 9.505. EE, remember to look at the end, to the second. So in the end, we get about 9.51 times 10 to the 22nd atoms of gold. So in the end, what we're looking at is 1.951 times 10 to the 22nd atoms of gold to evaluate our answer. Unit-wise, atoms is what we're looking for, how many atoms, and we should come up with a large number because we're looking at atoms of an amount of a substance. So we're all right there. Now notice something coming ahead now. We did have one mole of gold here and one mole of gold here. We could kind of think about fraction-wise just kind of dropping those two out. So in the end, it would kind of look like 31.1 grams of gold times, and if we just took the one mole of gold and one mole of gold out, we would have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd by combining atoms, whoops, atoms of gold over 190. 6.79 grams of gold. So we can actually start to look at combining these two parts together so we could almost cut out one step just by combining those two together. Let's try a second one. 22 and 23 are similar. I would like you to try those two out and then pause and then look at the answers to see if you're on the right track. So 22, after you've looked through that, what is the mass of 9.0 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of uranium. So our first step is what are we trying to solve for? In this case, what is the mass of 9.0 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of uranium? So to begin with, our first step is we're going to need to go through starting out 9.03 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of uranium and we need to go to atoms and we need to first go to moles so periodic table atoms to moles one mole of uranium is our conversion to go from moles to particles is going to be equal to, and if we look on the periodic, or excuse me, if you want to go from particles to moles, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd number of particles, so that would be atoms, atoms of uranium, atoms of uranium will cancel atoms of uranium. Now we're in moles of uranium, from moles, now we can use the PT. And if we're looking at the moles of PT, 238.03 grams of uranium is going to equal one mole of uranium. So one mole of uranium would cancel one mole of uranium. Now at this time, Think about as large fraction, numbers on top multiplied first, 9.03 times 10 to the 23rd times 238.03 divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd gets us about 357 grams of uranium. Now remember, 1, 2, 3 sig figs, 1, 2, three sig figs of uranium. Now as we're going, if you'd like to, you could combine this second step, 238.03 grams of uranium over 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms 
of uranium. Could be also done to combine those two steps or condense them down into just one step. For 23, I've condensed down the second step. So a party balloon contains 5.0 or 5.50 times 10 to the 22nd atoms of helium gas. What is the mass in grams of helium? So at this time, what is the mass is what we're trying to solve for in grams. And we're given that we're starting out with 5.5 times 10 to the 22nd atoms of helium. So our starting point, 5.5 times 10 to the 22nd atoms of helium from the PT, 4.0 grams whoops, of helium over 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of helium. Now remember, this is the step that we combine together. It would look like two steps going from atoms to 6.02, so one mole over 6.02 and then second step one mole over four grams of helium so instead what we've done is just combine the two steps together at this time our atoms cancel our atoms and we're left with grams of helium should end up with about 3.65 grams of helium in the end after you've calculated that one out so we're going to move ahead, putting this all together. I would like you to move into your notes back to number 31 and 32. And that's in section 10.3. So we're moving back to 31 and 32. Above 31 and 32 in our block again similar idea 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles of X equals 1 mole of X equals number of grams of X so X remember is whatever element we're looking at or whatever compound so this could be element or compound on the periodic table So just include this above um, number 31 in that box, converting between mass and particles. So we need the molar mass and Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and then we need our periodic table. So to work through our first one, how many formula units are in a sample of sodium chloride with a mass of 75 grams? Now sodium, remember, metal and a nonmetal, so it's an ionic bond, so they're going to be our formula units. If we start out with 75 grams, our first step is we need to find the molar mass sodiums plus one, whoops, chlorine is minus one, so when you crisscross NaCl is our formula. So we need to first find 22.99 grams from the PT and chlorine 35.45. Each one, just one of each, so when we add the two totals together, our molar mass 58.45 or 58.44 grams of sodium chloride. So to work through our problem, we started out with 75 grams of sodium chloride. We can go from grams sodium chloride to moles and moles to number of formula units. So this is that condensed step now. What we're showing here is going from 75 grams, what we're showing here is going from one mole over the grams times, and then our second step is one mole over the number of particles. So those two have been condensed together to give us this part down here. In the end, 75 grams times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd divided by 58.45 or 58.44 grams of NaCl gives us a total of 70 or 7.73 times 10 to the 23rd formula units of NaCl formula units remember for an ionic compound and our final problem of putting it all together 
What is the mass of 4.5 times 10 to the 22nd? Whoop. Molecules of sulfur dioxide. Now to begin with, mass, sulfur dioxide, SO2 is our chemical formula. So our first step, we have one sulfur, 32.07, oxygen 16.00 one sulfur two oxygens we come up with a mass molar mass of 64.07 grams per one mole of sulfur dioxide so to plug that in if we started out with 4.5 times 10 to the 22nd moles of SO2 now for our second step this is the condensed step again it's still the same as if we start with moles of our molecules of CO2. If we had 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd over 1 mole, and in the end times 1 mole over 64.07 grams, for our molecular mass, that's just combining those two steps together to get here. So in the end, 4.5 times 10 to the 22nd times 64.07 grams sulfur dioxide divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, you should get about 4.79. Remember, three significant figures is what we started with. So three significant figures to end with is what we're looking at there. So what we've done is combined converting between mass and particles. Stopping at that moles is where we need to stop at. So we could go from particles to moles to our grams or grams to moles to our particles. Again we stopped at the moles is where we needed to be for our converting. At this time we can now convert hopefully between each of those uh, three parts and we'll continue practicing and working on those.